When it comes to farming, our expectations couldn't be further from reality. But why is that? Do you think we should have the right to see where our food comes from? That question is at the heart of a battle between animal rights activists and farmers. This battle is fueled by laws that seek to gag would-be whistleblowers and undercover investigators by punishing them for recording what goes on in animal agriculture. To understand ag gag, we must first look at CAFOs. Concentrated animal feeding operations are factory farms that confine animals for over 45 days a year in a variety of unnatural conditions, such as metal stalls or windowless warehouses without vegetation, a stark contrast to the red barn farms of the past, which were mainly small-scale outdoor operations located in your neighborhood. The animal agricultural industry continues to use this imagery in their marketing to give you the impression that their animals lead happy, healthy lives. That could not be further from the truth. Today, 99% of all animal products consumed in the U.S. come from animals who are raised in CAFOs before being transferred to slaughterhouses. Fearing the public outcry that their tactics would elicit, the animal agriculture industry fought to conceal their methods rather than raise their standards. Consumers had the, these images of these happy farms with red barns and green fields, and then these investigations came along and people saw for the first time you know, what animals endure inside these facilities. In the early 90s, state associations and farmers began lobbying their states to pass ag-gag laws. They, they shot the messenger, if you will. They criminalized taking pictures and videos inside factory farms and slaughterhouses. In practice, ag-gag laws hide industrialized farming from public view. They penalize the recording or photographing of agriculture operations, forbid entering such a facility, or applying for employment with the intent of exposing procedures. They prevent documentation from being used as evidence in criminal trials, and sometimes even force individuals to turn over their footage and images to authorities. But without access to this information, how can we ensure that farm animals are treated fairly? Legally, if an animal is being exhibited or is a pet, animal cruelty laws protect them. However, if they are classified as food animals, they're exempt from animal cruelty laws so long as their treatment fits within common or normal farming practices. The catch is that industry standards are dictated by the industry, meaning that factories determine how to operate based on how other factories operate. The more facilities that participate in abusive tactics, the easier it is for animal agriculture to get away with inhumane practices. Pigs' tails are severed to prevent other pigs from biting them off in fights. Chickens' beaks are seared with a hot knife to prevent them from pecking each other to death in battery cages. Cows' horns are cut off so they don't impale each other in feedlots. Common practices include confinement in packed pens, which leads to uncharacteristically aggressive behavior as animals are forced to compete for space and food. Animals are force-fed cheap, indigestible foods that cause intestinal issues and bloating, relieved by forcing tubes down the animal's throats. Pregnant pigs are housed in steel cages called gestation crates, which are too narrow to even turn around in. After giving birth, the sow is frequently moved to an even smaller cage where she is forced by metal bars to remain on her side as her piglet's nurse, unable to interact with them. Chickens are often genetically modified to create unnaturally large breast and thigh tissue, accelerating their growth to ensure slaughter readiness at just six weeks of age. These modifications lead to painful skeletal deformities, heart failure, and cancer. When it's time for slaughter, Many chickens are strapped into leg shackles and hung upside down as they are dipped into baths of electrified water, paralyzing them before cutting their throats. And that is just the tip of the iceberg. With ag-gag laws in place, it is nearly impossible to know what other gruesome practices have become the industry standard. The few undercover investigations that have gone public suggest many factory farms engage in unlawful treatment, far worse than what's already allowed.
An undercover investigation of a California slaughterhouse revealed that meat from downed cows was going into the National School Lunch Program. Because downed cows are more likely to carry mad cow disease, consuming their meat is potentially fatal for humans. As a result of that investigation, legislation was passed that prohibits the human consumption of downed cows. Factory farms pose a serious risk for widespread outbreak of contagious pathogens. With thousands of animals packed together in unsanitary conditions, often being abused and deprived of proper nourishment or exercise, the stress placed on their immune systems leaves farmed animals particularly vulnerable to illnesses. So they are then pumped full of antibiotics, the overuse of which is not only unhealthy for the animal, but leads to the evolution of antibiotic-resistant bacteria that can transfer to human populations. Researchers estimate that 75% of emerging diseases start in animals. Hundreds of thousands of people have gotten sick or died from zoonotic diseases, or bacteria that originated in farmed animals, including the 1918 influenza pandemic, swine flu, bird flu, Ebola, E. coli, and salmonella. If ag-gag laws keep preventing these facilities from being scrutinized by investigators and exposed by journalists, it will all continue, bringing with it dire public health consequences. Factory farms are generally exempt from environmental protection regulations. Yet, the Environmental Protection Agency cites animal agriculture as the number one cause of water pollution more than all other industrial sources combined. When factory farm runoff containing manure and fertilizer leaks into waterways, it promotes the growth of algae blooms that create oxygen-deprived dead zones in which marine life cannot survive. These toxins contaminate not only our oceans and rivers, but also the water that we drink. With ag-gag laws in place, we are kept from seeing exactly how animal agriculture contributes to the degradation of our environment. Investigations have revealed numerous health risks to workers in animal agriculture facilities due to unsafe and unsanitary practices. The COVID-19 pandemic has really brought into sharp relief how egregiously dangerous factory farms and slaughterhouses are for workers. This Smithfield pork processing plant, one of the area's largest employers, is now a coronavirus hotspot. In slaughterhouses especially, workers are not given the ability to be socially distanced, to be more than six feet apart. This has led to thousands of positive COVID-19 cases in factory farms across the United States. But even aside from the pandemic, Workers are routinely subjected to airborne hazards such as ammonia and hydrogen sulfide gas, which leads to terrible symptoms. Factory farm workers are also traditionally from marginalized communities, including undocumented immigrants with limited options to earn a living. These workers are, are extremely vulnerable, um, and then you add this threat of criminal punishment. Facing the daily burden of such perilous conditions creates more than just physical consequences. By its very nature, the act of regularly participating in the mutilation and killing of animals also takes a high psychological toll. In addition to what ag-gag laws cover up, the laws themselves infringe on our First Amendment rights. Lois was allegedly being harassed by workers at the nursing home, but before a camera was put in the room and the video was available, the family thought really everything was okay. Even beyond the animal agriculture industry, in some states, ag-gag laws are broad enough to penalize whistleblowing across the spectrum of businesses, including hospitals, elder and veteran care facilities, and schools. I knew that there was something wrong, and I tried to work within the system of the school. I was never going to find out what happened unless I could put myself in that room. The ability to investigate, document, and disclose unlawful and unethical conduct is essential to a free society. Ag-gag laws are a direct attack on the First Amendment and on free speech. This is the primary way that the Animal Legal Defense Fund has been challenging and overturning ag-gag laws across the country. The Animal Legal Defense Fund, beginning in 2013, initiated a series of lawsuits challenging ag-gag laws under the First Amendment. We were able to strike down laws in Idaho and Utah and Kansas and Iowa 
You know, as it happened in Iowa, we struck down the first ag-gag law, they passed another one. Iowa Ag-Gag 2.0, they rewrote the law to kind of write around the constitutional problems that the court found with the first law. And so now we have also sued to challenge that law as well. So what's next? The factory farming going on that's assaulting this corporate consolidation in the agriculture industry, one of the reasons why I have a bill to put a moratorium on this kind of corporate consolidation is because this factory farming is destroying and hurting our environment and you see independent family farmers being pushed out of business because of the kind of incentives we are giving that don't line up with our values. A federal bill called the Farm System Reform Act has been proposed to transition animal agriculture away from factory farming by banning the opening of new CAFOs, phasing out the largest CAFOs by 2040, and holding them accountable for the pollution they release into the environment. The bill also seeks to protect family farmers and ranchers who have been hurt by large corporations and to help former CAFO owners convert to healthy agricultural practices. Without organizations, individuals, and legislators willing to confront the atrocities in our system, things like factory farms and ag-gag laws will remain unchanged and unchallenged. Many people, they're unaware that they have ag-gag laws in their state or that their state animal protection laws exempt farm animals. And when they realize those things, they're outraged. We should be demanding, and people are demanding, a food system that's accountable to us. You know, that protects animals, that protects food safety, that protects the environment. The Animal Legal Defense Fund is committed to being a voice for the voiceless, to supporting not only the animals who desperately need rescuing, but the people working to help them. And that's why we're fighting to end ag-gag laws. The Animal Legal Defense Fund will continue to fight ag-gag laws all across the country, and we need your help to pass laws that better protect farmed animals. You need the information to know what's happening and to know what's being done in your state. You can get that information at our website, aldf.org slash aggag, and help us in our fight to overturn aggag laws across the country. Thank you.